This video is sponsored by Magellan TV, and I'll tell you all about that in a little while, but for now let's talk about Ready or Not. Better known as Hide and Seek, but for keeps, Ready or Not is a 2019 comedy, horror, romantic, political thriller directed by two people you've never heard of. As goofy as the premise sounds, Ready or Not is a surprisingly fun, tongue-in-cheek film that hinges on a great performance by Samara Weaving, probably best known for her role in The Babysitter, which, coincidentally, has a very similar tone and storyline to this film. What I like most about Ready or Not is that it's able to walk the line between not taking itself too seriously and making the stakes feel very consequential nonetheless. But this isn't a review of Ready or Not. This is not a review at all, it's an analytical video about how to beat the villains of Ready or Not. The plot of this film, and I will be spoiling it from here on out, centers around Grace, a young woman about to marry Alex the Dumbass. Wait, dumbass? That doesn't sound right. I can't believe that in half an hour... I will be a part of the Ladomus Gaming Dynasty? Empire? Uh, Dominion. We prefer Dominion. Oh, it's Domus. <laughs> My mistake. Alex the Dumbass. Damn it! I did it again. Alex is part of one of the wealthiest families in America, the Ladomuses. On their wedding night, Alex explains to Grace that in order to become part of the family, she must play a random game, which is a family tradition that pays respect to the family's enormous success making and selling games of all kinds. The game chosen is Hide and Seek, but soon after the game begins, Alex finds finds Grace and explains to her that the entire family will kill her if they find her. It turns out that the family's wealth and success isn't due to business savvy, but is actually because they made a deal with the devil, and in order to keep the family successful, occasionally they must give Satan a sacrifice. If they don't find and kill her by morning, then the entire family will suffer a terrible fate. Alex helps Grace at first and guides her out of the house. His brother Daniel, played by Adrian Brody, helps too, but he spends most of the movie on the run, driving in the sun, looking out for number one. Grace gets caught and is brought back to the house again, but right before she's sacrificed, Daniel helps Grace to escape and is killed trying to protect her. Alex then has a sudden change of heart and decides to help his family kill Grace in order to keep the family's wealth. Unfortunately, before they can sacrifice Grace, the sun rises and the entire family explodes like incredibly well-dressed water balloons. The movie ends on this fantastic zinger what happened to you? In-laws. While I enjoyed the film, I couldn't help but think that there were four much less risky ways for Grace to survive this encounter with the Lodomuses than what the film presents. Grace does survive, but there were at least seven times in the film that Grace gets lucky and narrowly avoids a certain death. Our mission, then, will be to find ways to beat the situations shown in the film while eliminating as much risk as possible in order to find the best method of surviving ready or not. But before we can go over those solutions, first we need to consider what the conditions of the scenario are. That way, everyone will know what obstacles need to be overcome in order to find a solution, and it will also help eliminate solutions that wouldn't work. The game of hide-and-seek starts just after midnight and ends when the sun rises, or shortly after 6.15. This means that Grace just needs to survive for approximately 6 hours in order to beat the scenario. In total, there are 13 people hunting Grace, which includes the 4 housekeepers working for the Ladomus family. However, only the 9 family members are armed, and they're carrying antique melee and projectile weapons, though Daniel's wife Charity does have a modern handgun. The main goal of the family is actually to capture Grace alive in order to perform the sacrificial ritual, so the purpose of these weapons is only to maim her, not kill her outright. This means that they'll shoot for her limbs, not her head. It's also worth mentioning that because this ritual is performed only once every few decades, none of the family are proficient with the weapons they're given. In fact, Alex's sister accidentally kills two of the housekeepers and even misses Grace while shooting her from only a few feet away. The point is, the family is armed, but they're certainly not experts in the weapons they're using. In general, the family is somewhat bumbling and disorganized, because they didn't know they'd be playing this game tonight either. An important exception to note is that Alex's trigger for turning on Grace is when he finds out she has killed some of his family members, so if the solution requires killing any of his family, then Alex can be added to the list of seekers. The outside doors of the building are electronically locked and controlled from a central security room. A room room that also controls the security cameras set up in most rooms of the house. However, the Domuses initially turn these cameras off 
to give Grace a sporting chance, but eventually turn them back on again a few hours into the night when they start to realize that there's a real chance she could get away. So at least for the first few hours, the house has no active security cameras. There are weapons mounted along the walls of the house, but as Grace discovers in one scene, the ammunition for those weapons are for display only. The ammunition is display only. The layout and dimensions of the house are a little hard to pin down, as filming actually took place in two different houses near the Toronto area, the Parkwood Estate and Casa Loma. The only floor plan of the Lodomis Estate is seen in the security room, but gives us virtually no information about the layout. To get a very rough estimate for how large the Lodomis Estate is, we will average the size of these two estates. Doing so tells us that the Lodomis Estate is approximately 320,000 square feet in size, with a six floor 40,000 square foot mansion totaling 77 rooms in all. A defining feature of the house that we do know for sure is that it has hidden servants corridors which the housekeepers use to move around the house unseen. The film implies that the Lodomus estate is surrounded by other similarly sized estates with families that also made that same deal with a devil. This means that if Grace does manage to escape the grounds of the family's estate, she's surrounded by large sprawling properties and if she goes to them for help, they will at best ignore her and at worst return her to the family. Calling for help isn't an option either because they took her phone before the game even began. The last condition is that Grace has until the count of 100 to hide, but in the film this amounts to almost exactly two minutes before the family starts after her. Oh, hey there. I was just floating through space and holy shit, what the fuck is that? I am the universe. Behold the face of God. Why have you revealed yourself to me? Silence, you bitch! I have come to tell you about Magellan TV. I've been watching all kinds of cool documentaries on it. They have thousands of feature-length documentaries on topics like nature, military history, and more. Many of which are in 4K! Oh, I watch Magellan TV too. I've been watching Moonshots inside the Lost Apollo archives, which details the Apollo missions and reveals never before seen pictures and videos from the surface of the moon. Did you know the moon has its own mountain ranges? But, but did, did you, you know, know that Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards is based on a true story? The real Inglorious Bastards rediscovers the incredible story of Operation Greenup. Three American spies that went deep behind enemy lines in order to deliver critical military intelligence? Okay, that's pretty cool. But did you know that if you click the link in the description below, you can get one month of Magellan TV for absolutely free? And after that, it's as little as $4.99 per month? Again! Hello, I'm the universe. You can also find links to my personal recommendations. Magellan TV is an amazing platform for watching documentaries and they're helping to support this channel. So please give them some love by clicking the link below. So how do we beat Ready or Not? The way I see it, the film completely ignores Grace's most valuable asset, Alex. See, the thing is, Grace has no idea what's going on until the game is already underway. And despite Alex knowing that hide and seek could be a possibility, he doesn't appear to plan for this eventuality at all. All Alex needs to do is actually plan for this scenario instead of winging it. In the film, he tells Grace to escape the property before anyone can catch her, but he does this in such an incredibly haphazard manner that it was essentially doomed to fail. But imagine if Alex had perfectly planned for this scenario. Imagine if he told Grace ahead of time that if hide and seek is picked, then they're just going to cheat and he's going to give her a very specific set of instructions. He doesn't need to tell her that they're going to try to kill her, because if he does that then she'll run screaming and won't go through with it at all. In the film, Alex tells her that she doesn't have to win the game. Do I have to win? No, you just, you just have to play. But if he told her that she does need to win to join the family, that will give her the motivation to play along without her needing to learn the truth. So Alex sets the following plan in motion. First, he gives her the keys to his car before the game starts. Full disclaimer here though, the film never mentions how Grace and Alex get to the house and whether they have a car or not. So I am making an assumption that at least one of them brought a car. If neither of them have a car, then Alex needs to steal the keys of any car that's currently on the 
estate. Once the game starts, Alex heads straight for the security room and unlocks the outer doors just like he did in the film, except this time Grace will be right there and ready to leave. In the film, the security room is unoccupied so Alex should have no trouble getting in there. Once he unlocks the doors, Grace can get in his car and drive off the estate. When Alex sees that Grace has left the house, he can lock the doors again and destroy the security console, trapping everyone in the house inside, and hopefully they won't even notice any of this activity while they look for Grace. They'll think that she's still inside the house and that will keep them busy for a while, but once they figure out that Alex has helped her to escape, they won't be able to get out of the house anyways. The largest obstacle with this plan is how to get off the property, because the film never reveals how the front gate works. But because we saw the police get onto the property at the end of the film, we can safely assume that the gate is controlled by the same security room, and it unlocked itself when Alex unlocked the doors of the house. Alternatively, Alex could leave a phone in his car, so that Grace can call the police the instant she leaves the house. Ultimately, the solution is all about organization. If Grace and Alex were organized and hit the ground running once the game started, Grace could have made a clean getaway. Another way Grace could have survived is just by actually playing hide and seek. Again, this just requires Alex to tell her that she needs to win in order to join the family. Just like escaping, this comes down to Grace and Alex being organized. If the house does in fact have 6 floors and 77 rooms, it shouldn't be that hard to find a place within the house to hide from the family until morning, especially if Alex comes prepared. He can still destroy the security console, just like he did in the last solution preventing the cameras from being reactivated. He can give Grace a blueprint of the house which she can memorize beforehand. They can use walkie-talkies so that Alex can warn Grace to change hiding spots if it seems like the family might discover where she is. She could bring night vision goggles and stash them somewhere inside the house before the wedding to give herself an advantage in the darkly lit house. The point I'm trying to make is that there are dozens of ways Alex and Grace could have planned for the ultimate game of hide and seek and beaten this scenario. If Alex had told Grace about it ahead of time. Seriously, why didn't Alex just plan ahead of time? See, I'm not just some 2-bit YouTuber, okay? I'm out here asking the real questions. Like, does my cat really like being pet? I mean, I pet her and she seems into it, but then she starts kicking me. And then the claws come out. So many claws! It's so funny because we live with our pets, but we don't ever really think about how they could- Oh my fucking- ah! Probably the worst solution of the bunch would be to try to kill the Lodomus family before dawn, while technically possible. This solution would need to kick in after Alex tells Grace what's going on. Alex isn't going to help her kill his family, so it makes no sense for him to tell her beforehand if that is what his suggestion is going to be. But upon hearing this information, if Grace had set her mind on killing the family, she does have a certain number of advantages. First of all, she has the element of surprise. The family is trying to to hunt her and wouldn't expect to be hunted in return. Second of all, the family is completely inept in the use of weapons or fighting. We are shown multiple scenes where the family clearly has no idea what they're doing with the exception of Charity. I mean this old lady with an axe certainly isn't going to be a problem, she can barely lift the thing. And the housekeepers are unarmed, so they should make for relatively easy targets too. In fact, they'll probably end up killing themselves or accidentally shot by the family. Finally, and most importantly, Importantly, the family is entirely disorganized, and in the film they spend just as much time bickering with each other as they do trying to find Grace. They don't even seem that motivated to hunt her down, and half of them voice skepticism as to whether the curse is even real. But Grace has some large disadvantages herself. As we learned in the film, the guns on the wall really are just there for display purposes and have no ammunition in them. So unless she manages to capture and extort someone who knows where the ammo is, she's not going to be able to find a gun on her own. But if she really needs a weapon, she could just run to the kitchen and get a bunch of knives. As you know, I'm quite the romantic, and as a romantic, I'm very familiar with the old romantic saying, Roses are red, violets are blue. 
I'm going to throw 23 knives at you. Secondly, she doesn't know that the ammo is fake. So just as we saw in the film, she could run into an awkward and possibly fatal situation if she were to try to shoot someone. This could be mitigated by picking up one of the guns used by the family. For example, in this scene, if Grace had picked up Emily's gun when she dropped it, she could have had a working gun and could take the gun or weapon of the next person she managed to kill. But the largest disadvantage by far is Alex. In the film, we saw that Alex quickly changed his mind about saving his bride when he saw her killing his family members. If Grace decided that the way out of the situation was to kill the family, at some point Alex would inevitably betray her, and there's no way to know if Grace would survive the encounter. In the film at least, it catches her totally by surprise, and that would have been the end of her were it not for a sliver of sunrise. But the best solution by a long shot would be to not bring Grace to the house at all. We know a few things about the situation before it starts. Alex is completely aware that there is a possibility, however small, that his wife may be hunted down and killed by his family on their wedding night. We also know that Alex hasn't spoken to the family in years. His mother laments to Grace that she hopes Grace can bring him back into the fold. Please, try to bring him back into the fold. Alex is not on good terms with his family. So then why? Why did he let this situation even happen? If there was even the slightest chance that his new wife would be killed, why did he bring her there at all? Yeah, and maybe it's a crock of shit and nothing will happen. Oh, please. If you believe that you wouldn't have let her draw a card at all. It's the same reason why Alex suddenly turned on Grace at the end of the film, and it's also why beating Ready or Not is not possible. Ha <laughs> ha, I tricked you. I said there were four solutions, but there are no solutions. Take that, audience. <laughs> oh shit. It's conceivable that Alex was just being naive and thought that Grace wouldn't pick that card and wanted to reunite with his family. But it's more likely that he believed the curse was real, and that's why he brought Grace to the family. Despite his protests and his efforts to thwart them, deep down he loved his family more than he loved Grace and would have sacrificed her to save them. So while not bringing Grace would have been the best solution, he didn't do it because he didn't truly want to save her. This is why Ready or Not can't be beat, and why the other solutions I've listed wouldn't work either. All the solutions I've talked about depend on Alex preparing Grace for the game, but if Alex doesn't truly want her to win, then he wouldn't prepare her in the slightest, which is what we saw happen in the film. Not only did Alex bring Grace to the house, he didn't prepare her at all, completely negating any advantage she would have had. It's true that Grace does survive in the film, but she does so through a series of very fortunate events. If any of these encounters were to go differently, then Grace would have been killed. Which is why it's my opinion that there is no real way for Grace to beat this situation without plot armor, because everyone, even Alex, is out to get her in the end, and she's given no time to prepare for the situation at at all. Ready or not is a no-win scenario for Grace. But if you disagree, and you think there's another way for Grace to survive ready or not, please let us all know about it in the comments. Because honestly, I would love to be proven wrong here. But if I see one more comment that just says, lol, just nuke them, I will lose what little of my mind I have left. Do you understand me? Where would you get the nuke? Huh? You ever think of that? Do you know how fucking heavy a nuke is? Do you think it's actually practical to drag around a 50 ton IBM with you wherever you go just in case you accidentally wander into a scary movie? Do you ever think of that? Huh? <laughs> this video is only made possible by my patrons, and if you want to be as cool as them, head on over to patreon.com slash filmherald. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been the Film Herald. Thank <laughs> you.